uh, yeah, I say um, Le'Veon Bell. Um, I always look at his film, always watching his film um, on YouTube, looking at videos. That's why I said that inspired me as a running back. Um, for me, at least as a kid, uh, Larry Allen was a major influence for me. Uh, and then more nowadays, I look at a lot of Trent Williams tape and try to get as close as that guy as I can. Yeah. Yeah, for me, I'd say um, George Kittle. Uh, I just think that, you know, he's a true tight end. Uh, we, we're in a day and age now where a lot of guys say they're a tight end, but they're kind of just a big receiver. Um, so, you know, I really admire how he's able to play all three phases of the game as a tight end. Um, and that's something I aspire to be as a tight end, as a true tight end. All right, let's go right here, second row on the aisle. Do you have him on your fantasy team? Uh, no, I don't. I'm not a big fantasy guy. <laughs> uh, this one's for Theo and Caden. Uh, this is for both of you, your last game. What's it, what's it mean to you guys and how much you're putting on the field uh, for the Peach Bowl? Yeah, I think, um, you know, I've tried to make the most of every opportunity I've had at Penn State um, in every single game. Um, so, you know, I'm going to try and do the same thing, just make the most of all my opportunities and just kind of really soak it all in because I know things are going to look a lot different for me a year from now. Um, and I'm just kind of looking forward to having one more ride with my guys. Yeah, kind of going along with what Theo said, I'm just, I've been grateful the whole year for, you know, every opportunity I get to hang out with all my, my teammates, my coaches. Um, and this, this game will be no different. Um, just being grateful, yeah. Over here on the left, on the halfway. Uh, for, for Theo and Caden, uh, you know, James has talked a lot about having open lines of communication, uh, you know, in terms of leading up to the bowl and going through the decision-making process. Can you kind of offer some insight into what that looks like, what some of those conversations are like you know, between you and, and James leading up to this? Um, so for me, it kind of started with um, speaking with Coach Howe. Um, you know, just me and him have a really good relationship so we can have some candid conversations um, that I don't have to worry about going anywhere. Um, and then from there, I'll rely on Coach Franklin to kind of give me some feedback from, you know, what teams are saying and, and kind of his opinions and stuff like that. And then really just go to um, conversations with my family um, and, and figuring out what I feel like is the best decision for me and then going back with Coach Franklin and having another conversation. Um, so. You know, I, I'm blessed to have a really good relationship with Coach Hal and Coach Franklin, um, and we've had, you know, open, uh, open dialogue and, and able to communicate kind of where I'm at and, and how I feel. Um, so, very blessed to you know have a family atmosphere with with this team and feel comfortable enough to have those conversations. And yeah, I'm I'm basically the exact same way. I had a conversation with my family, uh, brought it to Coach Troutwine, brought it to Coach Franklin, and then basically did that cycle again. Just Conversating, yeah. All right, we'll go next here, row two on the left. We've heard a lot of simplicity equals speed the last month or so. What does that mean to each of you guys at your, your individual positions, and how did Coach Howell and Coach Sider kind of make things simple enough for you to do, do a, I, I guess, have a, have, a, have a better feel for, for what you guys are accomplishing the last couple of games? Okay, Tom, let's start with you this time. Um. I guess that that just mean like playing fast, um, blowing the playbook, just playing fast for real. That's all that means. Uh, I think the big thing with simplicity equals speed is just not having to think too much. Um, I think if if you're trying to think about too many things at once, um, you're not going to play as fast as you're capable of. Um, so it was really just kind of making the game plan. Uh, a way that you don't have to think as much pre-snap and, and post-snap. It's kind of if it looks like this, you're going to do this. And if it doesn't look like that, then you're going to do that rather than um, thinking about four different things and all these route adjustments and things that uh, if you get certain coverages, you have to do different things. It's It was kind of just making it simple so that you can play as fast as you possibly can. I think that showed up on tape um, week in and week out. Caden? I mean, these guys covered it pretty well. Like. Just being able to, you know, focus on the exact game plan we have, uh, which isn't a hard one, and um, just getting after it, it's the best way to do it, speed. All right, next question. All right, right here, row two. You got a question. We've heard that you guys have, uh, at least from coaches' perspectives, they've been working with um, Coach Kodalnaki 
um, as he's arrived on campus and started to work with the team. Have you guys had interact interactions where, with him where you're working out what the offense can look like in certain scenarios, and how has he been helpful there? Um, so right now we haven't gotten into too much of, you know, kind of what things are going to look like from schematics, really. Um, he's kind of just gone over his, his philosophy, and I think this time's really just been for him to kind of get to know us and get a feel for how we do things here at Penn State and um, how we work and just the personnel that he's going to have to work with uh, come in the springtime and the winter. Um, so that's, yeah, kind of how pretty much most of those conversations have gone so far. Anybody else want to tackle that? Uh, he summed that up real good. All right, that's a good answer then. All right, back here on the left. Uh, Katron, um, you know, this is an opportunity to get, uh, you know, 15 extra practices as a springboard in the next season. What are you looking to get out of, you know, these, these weeks of extra practice beyond, you know, game planning and, and beating Ole Miss? What do you want to get out of this personally? Um, I'm just trying to get better. Um, like I said, well, it's another opportunity do what I love to do. So um, I just want to take advantage of it. Um, just trying to keep getting better each and every day um, throughout practice. Then it was all, it, it's all going to pay off on Saturday. All right, let's go all the way in the back. This question is also for Katron. Uh, Katron, you came to campus. You guys have had nothing but success to double digit win seasons. Is this what you imagined? You know, go Rose Bowl, Peach Bowl. Is this what you imagined when you, when you signed up to play Penn State football? Can you say that again? My bad. You've had nothing but success since you got to campus. Rose Bowl, Peach Bowl, a bunch of wins. Is this what you imagined when you signed up two years ago to come to Penn State? You've had a very successful career in just a short time. Um, yeah, I could say that's what I signed up for. Um, anything I want to go on, I'm all, I always want to win, uh, help my team win. So anytime I can do that, um, I'm very grateful, very thankful um, to do that. Time for a couple more. All right, we'll go back over here, halfway on the left. Uh, Theo, uh, Tyler made a decision this year similar to the one that you made last year in terms of coming back. What do you think that he can get out of being back for another year uh, in his development, and what do you think that means for this team as a whole? Yeah, I think uh, Tyler coming back is huge, not only for, for his career, but for our team as a whole, for the morale of the team. Um, I'm super excited for what he's going to be able to do next year. I think he's going to have a monster year. Um, I think the sky's the limit for him and what he's going to be able to accomplish um, personally. And, and I think uh, for our offense, I think Coach Gay is going to have a lot of fun doing uh, different things to, to work with Tyler and get him open and make plays for him. So I think he made a really good decision. And I think he's going to have a really good year uh, next year. Right side on row three. Well, this one's for all three of you guys. Um, Kind of a two-part question. So, number one, what has the Peach Bowl experience kind of been like for you so far in being in Atlanta and also uh, being a Big Ten school? Uh, what are you guys, you know, taking from this as far as the matchup going in with Ole Miss and, and does that give you any extra juice going into the matchup? Caden, let's start with you this time, please. Yeah, I've been having a great time here at the Peach Bowl. Um, I live about 30 minutes away, so being able to spend time with my family on the hol holidays has been awesome. Um, and, um, you know, we, all, we love playing SEC opponents. You know, we played Auburn in these past two years. So um, being able to host Auburn and then play down here last year and then play down here again is going to be super fun for us. We, we love it. Right. Theo? I think uh, my experience at Atlanta has been really cool. Um, you know, I come from kind of a smaller town in Canada. So uh, visiting places like Atlanta and, and L.A. and stuff um, since I've been at Penn State has been really cool to kind of experience new things. Um, you know, we're really looking forward to playing an SEC opponent. Um, you know, we, we talk a whole lot about, you know, how the Big Ten is and how Big Ten football is. Um, and that's something we've kind of talked about this week, that, you know, we're the Big Ten. And uh, a lot of people have a lot of stuff to say about the SEC. But, uh, you know, we have a different brand of football in the Big Ten. We're looking forward to bringing it down here uh, to the SEC. Um, it's been a great experience um, and a great opportunity because a lot of kids where I'm from, they don't get this opportunity to go to bowl games or even go to college or do things like this. So it's been a great experience, a great opportunity. And about the SEC, I mean, it's a great opportunity to play another team, you feel me? Just do the, play the game, do what I love to do. Um, so it's just a, a great experience. All 
I have a very quick one for Caden and then one for Theo. What was the first thing you DoorDashed when you got here? Because I know you already did it. So, uh, like I said, I live 30 minutes away. Thank you for this question, by the way. Um, my first day I got here, I ordered uh, a large plate of oxtails. Um, and I, I ordered that two more times after that. And then when I got to the city, I ordered, um, it's called Pelicana Chicken. And it's like really good. They like sprinkle this stuff on it. It's banging. Did you get Thank your, you. Thank did you, you get for your fish yet? I, I'm going to do that on Friday night because it's a Friday night thing. All right. Good to know. Uh, Theo, for you, being able to leave a legacy here at Penn State, I know that's been something that's important to you. Mm -hmm. How do you want people to remember you here at this school as you take the next step in your career? Yeah, you know, that's something I've uh, taken a lot of pride in and uh, some I've worked really hard for. Um, you know, the Penn State tight end tradition has been something that's uh, been going on long before I got here. Um, so, you know, coming in here as a young kid, I, I knew that, um, you know, it meant something to play tight end at Penn State, and uh, I've worked really hard to, you know, leave the tight end room better than I found it and, and kind of leave a legacy. And, uh, you know, I kind of just want to be remembered as a guy that just worked really hard and, and worked his tail off and kind of gave everything to, to his organization and his team and his teammates um, and was kind of a selfless guy that just worked really hard. That's kind of what the legacy I want to leave here at Penn State. Okay, right here, second. All right, so this question's for all three of you because I asked your teammates, so I got to ask you, Wawa or Sheets? Wawa. Wow. I've, only, I've only ever really had Sheets, so I can only say Sheets. Wawa. I'm, I'm not keeping the official count, but I think Wawa is now in the lead. All right, time, time for a couple more. Anything, anything else, guys? Last chance. Anybody? Okay, here we go. Winner on the left. Uh, Caden, uh, uh, similar to the, the question for, for Theo about you know, leaving a legacy and, and leaving a mark on a program. I mean, for you, um, you know, being a starter for four years and, and having some ups and downs. I mean, when you reflect on this journey, what really stands out to you, and how do you think you can pass that on to some of the younger guys in the room? Um. Honestly, my, my message to the young guys this week has been about perseverance. Um, so like you said, I've had my ups and downs, but being able to stay focused and grind and get better every day is what's really important for me and what's really important for the young guys we have on our squad. So being able to pass down these lessons that I've been able to pick up over the years has been really awesome for me uh, this past season and these past couple of years, being able to instill that wisdom on guys. All right, any more? Yeah, um, this is for everyone. Um, obviously, you guys just got through the regular season where you're playing every week except for the bye week, and then now you have over a month off. Um, obviously, it's nice to sort of recover and heal uh, your body in that time, but how do you make sure that you're staying in rhythm and you're not getting rusty over the long break? Um, just throughout practice, trying to get better each and every day, 1% um, better, uh, um, having – Something that I want to get better at, at practice, so just doing that. Yeah, I think, um, you know, the concept of not playing a game for a couple weeks and then playing a bowl game <clears throat> has been going on for a long time. So uh, the coaches know, you know, how to, how to continue improvement even though we're not playing a game. Uh, during practice, uh, during the bowl prep, we do almost exclusively just uh, stuff against our defense, which usually it's uh, more against developmental squad uh, during the season. Um, so we're playing against the best defense every every practice during bowl prep. So, um, like, getting rusty is really not an option uh, when you're doing that. Yeah, kind of like what Theo said, they they have it down to a science. So we're, we're working hard every day, um, keeping conditioned and, you know, working out, uh, keeping our technique in, in order. So, yeah. All right, anything else, guys? Last chance? Good. Just under the wire. So close to getting out of here. So close. Obviously, a lot of people in this day and age of college football kind of expect players to opt out because they figure, you know, injury hurts your draft stock. Obviously, last year, Cliff really bumped his stock with his great Rose Bowl performance. And so do you take that looking at this game and say, I can really, I can really improve my stock and improve how people 
people look at me with this game? And what do you think you can show teams at the Peach Bowl for Theo and Caden, obviously? Um, honestly, I haven't really weighed any of that stuff out. I just kind of wanted to play one last game with my guys, 2023. So. Yeah, I don't really know how much um, you know playing is is going to really help me or, or hurt me. Um, I think you know it's more about you know finishing what we started as a team um, and just being there for the guys. Like I've been here for four years. I've kind of bled and cried and, and done a lot of things with this team. And um, I just want one more opportunity with those guys. And that's why I'm playing the game.